Welcome to HVAC Uncensored. You know that I always start this podcast off by showing love to those companies who help make this podcast possible. First, it's Old Faithful, my friends over at Yellow Jacket. They've been absolutely amazing, and uh, part of the, <clears throat> the sponsorship has been almost five years now. I absolutely love Yellow Jacket and everything that they stand for. Uh, guys, Yellow Jacket has been, when I think of Yellow Jacket, I think of reliability, and it just makes me think of this industry. Uh, I won't do the read, the old read, but working with my dad, I mean, this was the go-to. Analog gauges, they were the best. Their hoses are the best. They just kind of symbolize what this industry is. Everybody knows the name Yellow Jacket. If you've been in this industry for a couple of years, they know what Yellow Jacket is. If you've been in the industry for a long time, you know who Yellow Jacket is for a reason. It's because it is reliability, it's quality, and it's made right here in the fucking United States. All right? None of that cheap Chinese shit that's made overseas. Um, you know, you get what you pay for. These are some of the new products they have out. Uh, I actually have one of these uh, combustion analyzers, the C502P, standing behind me. Standing behind me like it's a fucking person. Sitting behind me right now that will be an upcoming giveaway. I have some videos coming out, so make sure to check the podcast out on social media if you want to see that. Also, uh, make sure that you do that. You are following on Instagram because this, I'll give you a hint, this is going to be a giveaway on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, I've already given away one of the Y-Jack uh, Manos, one of the manometers, and I, I have this recovery machine sitting behind me. Uh, I may even have another one of these. I don't think so. I think that was already been given away. But some of the new products they have coming out, um, as always, man, these things for 70 years, they've been making banging ass products for 70 years, um, and they're not going to stop now. I'm not going to stop using them. I love Yellow Jacket. Uh, all I ask for you guys is, I don't ever tell you to go buy something or, you know, I just want Yellow Jacket to be something you think about before you spend your hard-earned money. If it happens to be a different manufacturer, then so be it. That's your choice, not mine. Uh, I don't want to sway you one way or another. Uh, I will say this, no matter what digital manifold that you choose to buy, I highly recommend at least you have yellow jacket hoses hooked up to it because they are the best in the business, hands down, not even a question. No no one's hoses even come close to yellow jackets. It's just, it's uh, not when it comes to refrigeration. Uh, I know there's some other people doing things with vacuum hoses, that's one thing, but when it comes to refrigeration hoses, nobody can touch yellow jackets. That's a fact. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to spend some of this hard earned money that you guys are, you guys and gals are out there working and making every week, uh, if you're going to buy something new. All I ask is that you give yellow jacket a look, see some of the new products they have out. If you see something you like, awesome. If you happen to buy something from yellow jacket, do me a favor, take a picture on social media, tag me and yellow jacket in it. And what's going to happen is some of those people with those products, maybe I'm going to give something back to you. You might add a little, a few more Yellow Jacket tools to your uh, arsenal, all right? So if you happen to buy something Yellow Jacket, take a picture of yourself, tag me on Facebook, Instagram, whichever one you do. Tag myself, HVAC Uncensored, and also tag Yellow Jacket. And all the people that do that, we'll go through and we'll thumb one, and we will give something back to those people. Alrighty, remember 70 years of expertise built into every tool. Next, Blue On. What can I say, man? Blue On is like a cheat code. You know, back in the day, you used to play video games, and, you know, it's like up, down, down, A, B, start, up, you know, and you would cheat. Well, Blue On is a cheat code in real life. And, you know, and I hear people out there, I, I hear it's so funny when I hear people grumble about them because, uh, you know, the super techs that know everything, they don't need help. Whatever, that's fine. Um... But Blue On is a living, breathing cheat code that is absolutely free. Hey, guys, information, knowledge is power. We always say when it comes to this industry, the more you know, the secrets of operations, how you understand things is how you can be better and you can grow as a technician. Therefore, we need manuals. We need to know what goes where. Hey, this doesn't make sense. This system's old. I'm not sure what this relay is doing. I'm not sure what this is doing. Blah, blah, blah. People don't always leave the manuals. Blue On has you covered for that. 
if you search over the 300,000 manuals they have and don't find the one you need, all you have to do is call their tech support. They will find it for you. Trust me, on a previous podcast, a live show, one of the last Blue On Tech Support episodes, which if you have not checked out, you should, and we'll have some more coming up here in the new year as well. Uh, One of the friends of the show, Mr. Jason Johnson, asked, he said, he threw out a 70-year-old boiler as a joke. He was purely joking. And I'll be damned if the next day I did not get a call from some of the guys over at Blue On and said, hey, we have that manual for him. So if that doesn't prove to you that they can find the manual you need, then I don't know what will. A 70-year-old boiler, okay? Um, So if you happen to look on there and you don't find what you need, give them a call. To be honest, a lot of times I've found you're searching it wrong. It's not... um, it's not, it's not on there. It's, it's you're searching it wrong. You, you, you don't put in the whole complete number. If you watch one of the previous tech support episodes, the guys talk about that. And I think that they're trying to fix some of those things. Um, even though the app is pretty much brand new, I think they're already trying to update it and make it better because that's what Blue On does. They're constantly trying to evolve and keep making things better. Um, that's how they are from the top down. From Mr. Peter, the CEO, all the way down to... <laughs> Any, I mean, everybody I've met over there has been absolutely amazing, but they're all trying to keep making things better um, for us. And it's free, guys. It's free. So between the manuals you get, the free tech support, okay, free tech support on any manufacturer. We all know how it is. If you are not a factory authorized dealer with a lot of these manufacturers and you call their tech support, they're going to give you the runaround. They're going to tell you to go shit in your fucking hat. Oh, by the time they call you back, you're not even on the property or at the house anymore. Not with Blue On. They're going to answer the phone 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. They are always there when you need them. You run a call on Christmas, they're there. God forbid you got to wake up 1130 at night to go help a customer and you get stuck. You feel like you're stranded and you're by yourself. Guess what? You're not. You call Blue On, they're going to answer the phone, and they're going to be there to fucking help you. Nobody else is doing that. Nobody. Blue On's giving you that for nothing, for free. It costs you nothing to become a Blue On Pro member. Then inside of their app, you can get all that stuff. You can go in there and locate your parts from your local supply house, and you can purchase it right then and there. You can go pick it up from your supply house. It'll be waiting for you. And they're going to have a service, Curry, which you can look back. They've been on the podcast as well. They'll deliver you the part. Guys, I'm going to stop. This this read's coming too long, but you can tell I'm passionate because I think it's amazing what Bluon does. And I know all all the techs that work for me and work for us at Beltway absolutely love them, as they should. I wish when I was still in the field, Bluon was out. So I could have those kind of resources when I was stuck in a jam when my boss wouldn't answer the phone or so-and-so wouldn't answer the phone. It is there to help you. That's all I want you guys to know. It's there to help you. Don't be, you know, don't don't be, be dumb and act like you got to be Mr. Tough Guy and you can't call for tech support. It's about getting the job done and getting the customer stuff fixed and if you need help, you need help. All right. That's all that matters. Give Blue On a call. Go download the Blue On app. Um, become a Blue On Pro member. It is absolutely free. That opens the door to everything that they offer and become a part of the Blue On family. And remember, Blue On is upgrading the HVA, HVAC industry. And I'm happy to be partnered with them. I love everything they do and stand by them 100%. Let's get on to the show, party people. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States. And thank you to all those men and women who defend it. Welcome to the 
number one rated HVAC podcast. If you're looking to grow in the HVAC industry, then you're in the right spot. Blue collar people talking about blue collar shit. Let's get better together. So turn up the volume, buckle your seatbelt, and let's welcome your host, Gil KV Jr. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I am your host, Gil KV Jr. Uh, a little different this week, guys. I know. Uh, I apologize. So uh, there was no... Uh, when you're hearing this, you're only hearing the audio, and the video will not be live. Um, so this past week... Uh, so when you hear this, it'll be Monday. Uh, Monday the 23rd. So there was no live podcast on Monday. I was going to have Mr. Ben Poole from HVAC Tactical on. We had been booked for a little bit, and um, we were going to move it till Friday. And then because of scheduling conflicts, um, guys, with AHR coming up, it is, uh, it's one of the busiest times for us because AHR is one of the biggest events. So between both of our schedules, you know, and plus you got Ben who's doing AHR, and he's also has the HVAC Tactical Award Show. Um, which I can only imagine what it all goes in to plan that show. So we just couldn't link up. So we decided and uh, we'll just do it after the show later or something like that. Maybe do something down there. I know Ben's a busy man and I appreciate him uh, for everything that he does. So um, we decided just, to, um, you know, I respect his time and uh, obviously he respects mine. So we can do it anytime. It's not a big deal. Uh, so I ended up recording this, so it's not live. And to be honest, I'm glad because I want to start the show off and s say this in the upcoming year. I am going to have some that are going to be live shows. Some shows I'm going, they're just going to be recorded. And the shows that I don't, okay, if I have a guest, then I'll let those be live, depending on the guest or what I'm doing. Um, if I do not have a guest and it's solo, I'm probably not going to let the, sh the show be live only because what happens is, you know, I feel bad when I have a guest because I don't really get to communicate with the um, the people in the live chat that much. But that's because I have a guest and it's a podcast and we just happen to do it live and you guys can communicate during the show and I try to communicate with you as much as I possibly can. But what happens when I'm by myself is... I communicate with you guys, you know, I kind of start talking about something and it's not you guys fault. It's mine <laughs> because I, you know, squirrel, I change subjects so fast is it's they're they're a great time. It's fun. But when you listen to the audio podcast afterwards, editing it is a nightmare. And if you don't edit certain things out, it's if somebody listens to the audio podcast and they weren't watching, they've never seen the video. They, they don't know who the hell I'm talking to or what's going on. So it's just, I, I got to try to find the best of both worlds. So what I've decided to do is if I have a guest, then the live show will be Wednesday. We'll keep doing that. That's fine. Um, if something happens where there is no guest and I'm doing a solo show, um, then it will not be live on Wednesday. So I'll record the podcast that Wednesday. It just won't be live. But what I'll do is on that Saturday, I'll do a live stream. So that way the audio doesn't matter. It's just me hanging out, you know, with you guys. Um, and then whenever the podcast is not recorded live, that video podcast will be posted after the fact. So you can still watch it. It just won't be live. Um, so I think that's the best way moving forward. Plus, there's going to be some um, other audio things that are going to come out that you're not going to, um, you won't see the live show. Uh, I have a, uh, we're building a studio at Beltway in the office. And if you guys don't know, so all of you business owners out there, uh, obviously my good friend Ryan, the owner of Beltway, um, and one of our other friends, uh, Mr. Nathan Wigley, Ryan and Nate started their own podcast, and I'm so happy for them. It's called the Ryan and Nate's Business Podcast. It's on all the major podcast apps. I think it just dropped last week. Um, two smart dudes, man. I love these guys to death. Both of them are just great fucking human beings. They're great men, and I wish them nothing but the best. Uh, they're both very good friends of mine, and they're very smart dudes. And um, 
they're very genuine guys and you'll you'll realize that when you listen to it um but yeah check that out their first podcast it's gonna be all things business um you know obviously ryan owns beltway and then nate owns him and his family own it's called new life automotive uh so they own the automotive service that actually takes care of all of our vans and stuff like that um so they're both looking at different things through from a business perspective you know talking to companies and services and stuff that like things that we actually use or they actually use not just the promotion of stuff so anyway check that out but the reason i brought that up is we are going to turn one of the offices in there into an actual studio um i already have a microphone and stuff in my office right now but we're gonna build an actual studio there for them to use and then i'm gonna use it as well so i'm gonna be doing some things there as well so i'm gonna mix some things up here in 2023 so a lot of cool stuff and um I have some videos shot, but I'll be honest, I'm not going to worry about getting any of them out until after AHR. Um, me being off for almost two weeks from work when my mom was in the hospital, and I don't want to keep beating that dead horse. Everybody who knows me, uh, her fo follows me, already knows about that stuff. But, man, taking two weeks off and trying to play catch up with work and then home stuff and podcast stuff before AHR has been a fucking nightmare. It really has. So... If you're listening to this, uh, the prizes for the last giveaway, the Christmas giveaway, uh, were shipped out today, this morning. Um, so I apologize about taking a little bit, but um, it's hectic, man. I don't know what to tell you, uh, but they are gone. Uh, so you guys should have them sometime, sometime next week. If you don't have them by the end of that week, then please feel free to message me. And um, I will, you know, send you tracking information, uh, tracking information, all that kind of stuff. But you guys should all have them next week. Um, but yeah, playing catch up, it's been hard. And um, it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. And uh, and then also on Thursday nights, I have a men's group thing that I'm doing. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a lot. So trying to play catch up and already take care of the, you know, day to day, week to week tasks that you have to normally do. Uh, it just gets to be a lot, and I'm not sitting here bitching and complaining. It is what it is. It's my choice, but, uh, you know, I'm always open and honest with you guys, and I want to let you know what's going on. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. I'm just going to tell you how it is, but anyway, I want to I wanna talk about today, and I hear a lot, and um, I want to talk about what it takes to really make it in this industry. I'm talking about what it takes to be a good tech the kind of mindset that you have to have and i've talked about hvac mindset before and uh i'm and this is going to be purely technician I'm, I'm not talking about owning a business business owner management nothing like that this is solely going to be a technician um because what what i see happens so much is i see technicians who learn just enough to be dangerous and then they stop fucking learning they just keep riding out that wave when if you just keep going it, you're gonna have your aha moment and then all of a sudden everything is gonna click for you that's what happens in this industry you start off learning guess what you're gonna fuck some things up we all did okay don't let somebody tell you that they didn't because they're lying all right you start off obviously you gotta you gotta have the morals and the work ethic to be able to to do this you can't be a shit bag and make it in this industry well i take that back you can be a shit bag but um you won't be very good at what you do being a shit bag because you know eventually they'll figure you out um but if you have good morals good values a good work ethic and you come into this industry and for all you young guys out there listening to this please please listen to this um if you've been in the trade for a few years and maybe you're not getting to where you want to be and something's holding up something's holding up your progress i hate to say it look in the mirror probably not everybody else it's probably you um not always it could be the company you work for but i would say nine out of ten times you gotta got look in the mirror and look at yourself normally you're the problem you're the one holding yourself back all right so think about that and i don't say that to be mean guys i say that to all of you men and women out there because i want you guys to do what's best for you i want you to have the best life 
um, that you can possibly have. And I want you to be able to do all the things that you want to do. And sometimes you got to have that uncomfortable moment when you're like, fuck, man, I'm the one who's been holding myself back. And the sooner you have that conversation, the better. You know, and nowadays, the sad part is we have too many people surrounded us or surrounding us that are too afraid to tell us the truth. You know, I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I'd rather you kick me in the nuts and get it over with. Don't give me that shit sandwich where you say something nice, then you say what you mean, and then you hurry up and got to compliment me. Fuck that. Okay, if, if you got to say something, say, hey, Gil, you're fucking up, dude. Like, what you did yesterday, that was fucking stupid. You know, I, I can't believe you did that. I don't expect that from somebody like you, blah, blah, blah. And hey, maybe I, I might be pissed when you say it, but after it's over with, I'm going to be like, damn, dude, thanks. I, I really appreciate that person for saying that. You know, that, that's how I am. Not everyone is like that. That's fine. But we all need to be uncomfortable to grow sometimes or have that uncomfortable moment in order to grow. So this industry, all right, we start off, we, we learn the basics, we go to school, all right? When you get out of school, you are not a fucking technician, all right? If you guys are, if you listen to this and you're in trade school and your instructor is telling you that when you graduate this class, you're going to get your own van, you're going to be making 30-something dollars an hour and all this, he's fucking lying to you, all right? He's lying to you. Not saying you can't make those, but you're not going to make it when you get out of school, School is a foundation. It's to learn the theory, the foundation behind what we're going to do. You know, what a condenser is, what an evaporator is. Try to learn the basics of the refrigeration cycle, some electricity, you know, hot wire, neutral, difference between single phase and three phase. Um, you know, how capacitors work, you know, uh, motors and, and, and learning all that kind of stuff, especially if you're not naturally mechanical inclined. You're trying to take all that information, you know, and have that nice base layer, all right? Nobody expects you to come out of school and, you know, walk up to a chiller and be like, bam, this is wrong, that's wrong, do this, do that, do this. Doesn't happen. Does it mean that you can't have your, you know, LeBron James and your, you know, the guys that come out and do stuff like that? No, some guys can. Some guys will just naturally have it, but 99% of you won't. I didn't. I had to bust my ass to get where I am. You know, I, I didn't just open a book and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, you know, just rattling shit off. It didn't work that way. So you go to school, learn as much as you possibly can, sit in the front row, ask questions. You're not there to fucking make friends, all right? You're not in high school anymore, people, all right? It's not about being the class clown or trying to find some girl because you're trying to fuck and shit like that. It's not about that. That's not your priority. You're trying to be the best. You're trying to master your fucking craft. And you're trying to go out there and tear shit up the right way. Tear shit up. I mean, like, tear shit up and make money, not break shit. Make sure I don't misunderstand myself there. But, um, yeah, put that effort behind it, you know? Um, but that's the whole point of that is to learn the foundation when it comes to school. And then hopefully find a good company who's willing to train you, they have like a good culture, um, which every company culture is different. Doesn't mean that one's right and one's wrong, one's good and one's bad. Um, you know, I know several companies that um, have amazing cultures and they're completely different. And that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. What makes this company culture awesome is what makes, you know, that's what makes that company. You know what I mean? What makes company B culture good is totally different than company A, but that's what makes them what they are. You know, we have amazing culture at Beltway, but it doesn't mean that the way we did it is the same way that this other company should do it. Uh, you know what I mean? It's it's gotta be it's gotta be different. And and also don't be afraid that the first company you go to work for, it's okay if that's not the company that you retire with, because that's rare. You know, um sometimes, you know, it's gonna take you know, a company or two to be able to find the one that you really fit into. And you're like, man, this is home. Like, I love this place. I love the people I work with. Like, I want to be here forever. And trust me, like, you'll have that moment. At least I hope you do. Um, and if you don't, it's okay. I mean, and it's okay to change companies and, and don't, 
don't I'm not don't confuse me though. I'm not saying to jump ship every summer and be that guy because that's not good. But if you work for a company for four or five years and you're like, hey man, this place is good, but you know, I just there's gotta be something better. You know what I mean? And like they're not doing things right or paychecks are messed up or you know what I mean? Then then don't be afraid to take that risk. That's the point I'm trying to make. So I don't want the point I'm trying to make to be misconstrued there. Um but find a company that you're in that's going to provide you some training and soak that fucking training up. But don't just don't just take the training they give you and be done with it. All right? Go home. And I say this at the end of every podcast. Do the little things that the next guy or girl is not doing. Go home. Watch some videos. Read a book. Uh, a podcast, whatever it is, try to make yourself better. Put your fucking phone down. Stop watching YouTube. Stop watching that dumb shit. I have a bunch of friends who are fellow influencers. I love these people to death. They're amazing human beings. I love what they do. Um, I would hang out with them any day of the week. But I don't always consume their content because... I can't make content or do the shit that I have to do if I'm sitting around watching other people's videos. All right? You can't be getting better at what you're trying to do if that video or whatever you're watching is not bettering you in some way. I mean, if you're watching a video about finances and you're trying to get better with, you know, how you put your money in the bank, okay, that, that's a different story. It's not going to help you in your, your, uh, your work life, but it's making you better. But if you're just watching some bullshit video, and I'm not saying you can't do it every once in a while, but you have to keep doing things to make yourself better. Um, I feel like too many people get sidetracked nowadays. And, uh, you know, one thing, I, you know, my daughters are younger, but my two boys, I try to, I try to keep them focused because I feel like it's so hard to get distracted nowadays. And um, same thing happens to me. And I have to, really, you know, smack myself sometimes to make sure that I stay focused, you know, on the goals that I have. So I said on a previous podcast to make sure that you set goals for yourself, hold yourself accountable. Uh, Cause if you don't do that, then you can't sit back and wonder why, Oh man, this never happened. Well, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. You didn't do what you said you were going to do, you know? Um, so just something to think about, but, um, and the reason I said that about, you know, watching the video and making yourself better, I want you to think about an athlete. You know, think about the good athletes, no matter what sport it is. Most of them would go to their regular practice, do whatever they had to do, and then, then they would work out on their own. Stay after practice, you know, and take some more reps, whether it was baseball, hitting, pitching, football, catching, tackling, whatever. You get my drift. And that's what would make them the best. That's what would make them stand out from the crowd. Okay, if you don't want to be average, then don't put in average work. You're only going to get out of something what you put into it. You know, and I say this preaching to a lot of you younger guys out there. There is no better time to be a tradesman than right fucking now. All right? You are needed. And you can name your fucking price if you're good at what you do. But you got to be good. You can only bullshit your way through it so long before bingo, you know, bingo, bango, bongo. This guy's a fucking piece of shit. You know, you, you can pull the wool over somebody's eyes for a little bit, but eventually they're going to figure out and then you're going to end up being that guy that hops around and around and around and around and around. But if you are truly good at what you do, you're a good technician, you know the ins and the outs, I can send you on any call, you can work on anything. Maybe, you know, you have a few weaknesses, that's fine, I'm not telling you I'd be perfect, but, you know, let's say residential, you can go run, you know, gas furnace calls, propane furnace calls, any kind of heat pump call, uh, boilers, uh, all that stuff. You can take all those individual calls. You can do maintenance. You have good communication skills. Dude, you can name your fucking price. That's what we look for. Someone who is good technically and who can communicate. You notice I never said sell. All right? Selling is not important to me. Communication is. Because if you can 
if you know all the technical stuff and you can be thorough and then you can communicate that to the customer, you'll make money by doing things the right way. And I, I also get this, that sometimes communication is a gift that some people have. Not everybody has it. Um, and, and, and that's okay, but that means you need to be really, really strong to make up for it somewhere else. Or you need to learn a really, really good system and stick to it. When you, if you look at the good companies out there, when you go, when they go to a service call, the really good guys, you know, and this is what I was doing at the end of my career, and it's how I was able to do million dollars in revenue uh, because of these systems is I didn't have to think about what I was going to do on a call because I did the same thing every time. I, I would, you know, when I walked in, I would greet the customer, explain to them. I would say the same things as far as how I greeted myself and how I greeted them, ask them what was going on, um, you know, and, and it was just a process. You get into a rhythm where it's just bam, 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 and you're used to it. And when you do that, guess what? You can start to be able to control the outcome. You know who the customer is going to have good service because it's proven itself already. And there's plenty of people out there who have really good systems. You know, that's why people go out to some of these different guys, and I'll throw some names out there. Um, you know, you have your, you know, my buddy Victor Rancor. You have Victor's stuff, you know, with the Service Hero, which is an awesome system. You have Gene Slade. Some people like him, some people don't. But Gene's system works. It's proven. Coral Whale, who was a fucking murderer, loved that chick to death. Does gazillions of dollars every year as a maintenance tech with Gene's system. She learned this system. She stuck to it like a fucking rock star. She read the rewards of it. Let's say um, you got Mr. Jason Walker out there. I think his is more sales. It's not really a system tech wise. I think he might have one. Um, you got Mr. Joe Cacera, fucking king of it. Um, there's a bunch of them. And the systems work. But see, what happens is everybody thinks they know better. They want to try to reinvent the wheel. They learn these systems, and everybody's like, all right, well, I'm going to do this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little twist on this part. And then we'll put a little twist on that part. No. Your twist sucks. <laughs> I hate to say that, but your twist fucking sucks. If, you're, if what you did worked, they wouldn't have done training. You know what I mean? People will be asking you to teach their employees, and that's not what's happening. Um, you learn one of those systems, and you stick to it. You know, then you have to be resilient. You can't do it for a little bit. Like, oh, I'm going to do it on my first call, but not my second call. Eh, maybe I'll do some of it on my third call. Ah, uh, fourth call. Yeah, I'm fucking tired, man. I'm, yeah, fuck this call. I'm just going to get in and get out. Oh, fifth call? What the fuck, man? I got to do another call? I'm definitely not doing that system this fucking call. Well, that's why it doesn't work. But if you have the people that they do that every fucking call, they're disciplined. They're the ones who reap the rewards. That's how this works. So it's plug and play the system. It doesn't matter because they're all similar. Okay? And I'm not going to sit here and get into each individual one, even though I know all of them. All of them are good, and you could literally pick which one you wanted to do, and if you followed it to a T, you would be successful. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. They're all similar. All of them are based off being thorough in customer service. All right? It's about quality over quantity. And when you take your time and you go in and you really wow a customer, you change your mindset. It's amazing what things can happen. All right? So back to you young guys out there, man. Get out of school and hopefully you can find yourself a good company that you can get into that's, you know, offering some of these kind of trainings that you can get yourself trained. You know, that's one of the good things about some of the bigger companies. I'm not a huge fan of some of the bigger companies. I'm just going to be honest. Not all of them are bad, though. I, I'm not going to, you know, that's a lie if I said that. 
um, most of the things about the bigger companies that people think um, aren't true. Um, but a lot of those bigger companies do have really good training, though. What the tech does with that training is up to them. Just like some of those training programs I just mentioned, they're all taught honest. If somebody takes that information and decides to use it in a dishonest way, then that's that person. That's not the person who taught them, you know? Um, so you can't blame the teacher for the student taking what they learned and using it for, you know, illicit plans or whatever the fuck they wanted to do. That's their fault, not the teacher's fault. You know, because like I said, all of those people that I mentioned, all the different, you know, technician programs and sales programs out there, um, I know pretty much what all of them are. Um, I've taken some of them personally. Uh, some, I know some behind the scenes things, that kind of stuff. And they're all good. They are. Every single one of them. So if you're thinking about doing one, by all means, do it. You know? They're not cheap. It's an investment in yourself. But you have to stick to it. And, you know, you can make some serious bread in this industry. You know, not by lying, cheating, stealing from people. No, I mean, like, you can make some serious coin by just being really fucking good at what you do. And I keep saying master your craft. And I, w I don't want to say, I'm, that's not my saying. I'm not stealing that. Mr. Ben Pohl from HVC Tech always says that. And I just love the saying, master your craft. Because it's so true. If you are not going to do something to the best of your fucking ability, then don't do it. Or if you're not going to do it, don't be pissed when things don't turn out the way you want them to turn out. Because ladies and gentlemen, like I said earlier, there is no better time to be in the trades than right fucking now. There's a shortage of people. If you're a young kid and you're coming out of high school and you don't know what you want to do, and you're like, well, I didn't really like school, you know, but I, I've always been good with my hands. You know, I like to tinker with cars or, you know, uh, something like that. Get into the fucking trades, man. Literally, I know 20, 25-year-old kids making 150 plus thousand dollars a year or more. Legit, doing things the right way. Some of them make more than their parents do. And it's life-changing. They don't even know what to do with the money. We have to give them finance classes so they know how to put the money away and not be stupid with it. So, it, like I said earlier, nobody's come knock on your door and say, hey, here's a good life. You want it? Here, I'll, I'll give it to you. You know, don't have that fucking lotto mentality. Because it ain't going to get you a fucking nowhere. All right? You know, you know what I mean, lotto mentality. Like, recently, the billion, we all buy our tickets, we go to bed. Like, man, what if, man, if I wanted to make a million, I'd do this and I'd buy this. I'd say, fuck this guy and fuck him. And then guess what? We wake up the next day and we didn't win. That's what happens 99.9% .9 of the time. Because they say you got a better chance of being struck by lightning twice, not once, two times, than you do winning the Mega Million. And hey, if you do, great. But the chance are it's probably not going to happen. So I rather bust my fucking ass off, put the work in to get to where I want to be, and then, if God forbid, I do hit it, bam. I'm good. But I'm also safe if I don't. And you know, if you play the odds, you're probably not going to. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I just, it's funny because I feel like I see, I see a lot of good young talent coming into the industry. I really do. Some people that I'm really excited for the future of these people to see where these people go. Um, but then some of them, I'm not sure how I feel about them. Um, some of them are shitbags, so I don't know how I feel about them. I won't say this person's name or nothing like that, but I saw a younger, and he's not even as young as I thought he was, so he should know better. But the guy literally screwed a hole through a heat exchanger. And I'll, I'll, I have pictures of this. I'll put the pictures on my Instagram and Facebook so you can see. Um, shot a screw through it. 
realized, oh shit, this is too obvious. They're going to know this isn't a crack. Flip the heat exchanger around and ba-dink, 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 smacking it with a hammer and a screwdriver. I'm just dumbfounded. I have never had to lie to somebody like that in order to sell something, ever. You don't have to. It's just, it's crazy. Don't be that guy. Because guess what? You might get away with it a time or two. But you, karma's going to get your ass, all right? Karma is going to get you. Not to mention, if you do stuff like that, you're a real fucking piece of shit. The person who did this is a piece of shit. Hands down, piece of shit. Didn't know what he was fucking doing in the industry. You know, been bullshitting his way through. Thinks he knows more than he does and he doesn't. And has to do bullshit like that to try to make money because he's not willing to put in the work. Don't be that guy. Don't take the easy way out. The easy way out will get you nowhere. All right? Do the right thing. Treat everybody like it's your fucking mother's house, your grandmother's house. Like, just have a little fucking self-decency, some dignity, some integrity. All right? And um, and that's the thing. I know people make these half-cocked comments, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram. Normally, it's Facebook. Because um, we all know Facebook's fucking crazy. But, um... At least my Facebook group is. Uh, you know, and, and we like to think that there's more dishonest texts than there are honest, but I, I don't believe that. I, I, in my heart of hearts, I don't believe that. I think that they, you know, I would say 85, 90% of all the technicians out there are good, honest people just trying to make a living and do it right. Maybe some of them, you know, are lost and they're not doing it the right way and getting the outcome they want to, but they're not shitbags. They're not resulting in, you know, taking advantage of people. I think that's a small 10% that the things they do that are so outlandish, when they do it, that people talk about it so much, and then 15 stories, you know, kind of grow off of that, and it just makes it bigger than than what it is. Um, well, I don't want to say because it, I don't want to say bigger than what it is, but you know what I mean. It makes it seem like it it uh, takes up a bigger piece of the pie than it really does. And you guys could be listening to this being like, Gil, you're a fucking idiot. That's not true, man. There's It's 70-30. There's at least 30% of people out there being shitbags. And maybe you're right. I just, in my heart of hearts, don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that we're that fucked up of people that, you know, 30% of us are out there fucking ripping people off. Um. So 10, 15% at max, I would say the rest of them, you know, maybe they just need to learn more, you know, more training, a uh, better situation. You know, maybe they have things going home to where they just, um, they don't think about it like career. It's just a job to them. They're living week to week. Like there's other factors in play that them being a shitty human being is not it, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think 2023 can be a fucking great year, man. I wish each and every one of you a fucking amazing year. I want you to get everything that you want to get out of this year. Um, I always say this, and I, I hate to keep repeating myself, but remember to always have an end game. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's always good to I'm ha choose your path. And maybe sometimes you're like, you know what? This is the door that I originally wanted to go through. But now that I'm here, I'm going to go through this door. Go through that one. You know what I mean? Um, like, hey, I wanted to be in residential, but you know what I mean? I love residential, but I have this door over here that I can go do some commercial stuff. And it looks like an awesome opportunity. Well, go do it. You know what I mean? Sometimes as you go, different doors will open, but if you stay focused and you have some kind of plan for what you want to do, that's why I tell a lot of young guys and a lot of people say, like, when I say, like, I want young guys to start their own business and they're like, Gil, you say that, but then you tell them about all the bad things that, that are going to happen. I'm not, just so you all know, I don't tell you that to dissuade you from what you're doing. 
to make it so you don't want to do it. I just want to be honest with you. All right. Starting a business is not easy. It is not peaches and cream. And the ones who think it is are the ones who fail. So if you know going in that this is going to suck and then you're like, well, you know what? Maybe I don't want to do this. But the ones who decide, hey, you know what? I've heard from people. I know it's going to suck for a little bit, um, but I'm willing to put in the work to be able to reap the benefits later. Then by all means, fucking rock and roll. Um, so that's why I just tell people the truth. You know, I feel like there's too many people that see the results of people, but they don't look at the journey of what it took to get there. All right. Um, it, it's, it's easy to look at a photo of somebody at the top of a mountain and being like, man, this guy climbed Mount Everest. All right. Well, listen to the journey that it took, you know, his nuts frozen to his leg and starving and, you know, throwing up or almost getting hypothermia on the way to the top. You know what I mean? Listen to the journey of what it took that person to get there, not just where they got. So that's why I say what I say. Um, I tell all of you to take the risk. If you got the balls to do it, um, do it. If you fail, so what? You're never going to know unless you try. And the younger you try, the more chance that you have to make up for it. If, God forbid, you lose a bunch of money um, as you get older. I'd rather do something like that in my mid-20s and, God forbid, I fail be able to learn from it, maybe try again or go another avenue than to wait until I'm 35, 40 to do it, where if God forbid something like that happens, it could be devastating, you know? Um, so I partnered up with people and it's been fucking horrible. Some of the worst businesses I've ever made in my life. I so wish back in the day that I would have just went and did my own thing, but I didn't. And that's on me. I had too much other bullshit going on in my life, fucking drug habits, stupid things like that, that I didn't. I always had that fucking uh, thing that just, I, there was a way, I couldn't do it. And uh, always hold me back. You know, I've been fortunate enough to now be in some good situations and, and, and have some good opportunities open up for me. Uh, and it's been great. So always, always have your end game, all right? Um, and always stay focused. And I'm not going to sit here and keep preaching at you, man, because I love all you guys, man, guys and gals. I really do. I want you to know how valued you are, how important you are. And, you know, the trades are important. This world would be dog shit without us. It wouldn't exist. We built this fucking city. I, I love I want whenever I hear that song, we built this city, I just think about tradesmen. Because we built this fucking world. This world was built on our back. I mean, obviously no didn't have HVAC in the beginning, but the world wouldn't go on without us. You know, and I always feel like I repeat myself because I use the same analogies, but um, you know, that doctor. If you're supposed to have surgery in a day and that surgical room the doesn't have power, surgery's canceled. If it doesn't have plumbing, surgery's canceled. If the air conditioning doesn't work, surgery is canceled. That big shot lawyer and judge, same thing. Guess what? That shit's not happening that day. All right? There's no facet of a building or a house that one of us in the trades don't fucking touch. And once you guys start realizing how important you are and what you do, it's amazing where it can take you. But don't, you don't want to be the run of the mill tradesman though. You don't want to be a run of the mill technician. Don't just let yourself fall into the crowd. There's a crowd of technicians. Nobody knows who you are. I want to be in a group of technicians. People are like, oh, shit, that's Gil. Like, dude, that guy knows his shit. He knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah, I've done calls with him, man. Yeah, this, he, he, knows, he knows his shit. 
You know what I mean? And we've all worked with people like that. And you, you want to aspire to be that guy, that girl. And that's one thing, man. I know some ladies that are coming in this industry that are fucking killers. They're already coming into a so-called man's trade, a man's industry. So they already have, you know, the odds stacked up against them. But they're coming in, and they're coming in fucking hungry. And I am so happy for some of these, uh, some of these young ladies, man. Because they are just good women, honest people coming in, learning to do things the right way. And people are like, damn, this chick is badass. Goddamn right she is. All right, so I won't keep this going, man. I, I hope I didn't go off on too much of a rant here and somebody can get some kind of motivation from this because this that's why I said it. I want to motivate each and every one of you to be the fucking best you can be. And I know sometimes what we do gets monotonous. It gets fucking hard, especially with our day-to-day -day struggles, whether it's your marriage, your kids, financially. I have it too. All right, I'm not exempt. Nobody's exempt from those issues. I know everybody looks all happy-go-lucky on Facebook, like, oh, look at me. But everybody has some kind of issue they're going with. Don't let that shit get you down, all right? Like I always say, the first health that you have to worry about is your mental health, all right? Your mental health has to be good. If you need to talk to somebody, God damn it, talk to somebody, okay? Um... I was in the process of working, but regardless of whether I get a discount or, or, or you get a discount or, what, or I get money or whatever, God damn it, um, Better Help is one that I was talking to for a while. There's a bunch of big podcasters that have discounts, but Better Help is like an online platform, you know what I mean, um, that you can talk to a therapist on your phone, you don't even, they don't have to see your face, however you want to do it, there's a way for you to be able to talk to somebody, all right, so if you think that's going to help you in mental health-wise, and you feel like you need to get some shit off your chest and talk to somebody, then do it. If you don't have anybody locally, your friends or family that you can talk to, um, then do that. Try it. You know, physically, take care of your body. Take care of yourself. Just like I said, when it comes to the trade, your body's the same way. You're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you eat dog shit all day, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Sonic, in and out. I wish we had in and out around here. It was so good when I went to California. But anyway, um, I'm not saying that I don't eat stuff like that, but I not every day. I try to take care of myself. Um, uh, not as well as I should. You know, take care of yourself. You can splurge every once in a while, but don't eat that bullshit every day. Pack a lunch. You know, maybe Monday through, say your payday's Friday. Monday through Thursday, you pack a lunch. You know, sandwich, some chips, a fucking yogurt. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever it is you like to eat. Then maybe Friday's payday. Friday, you get to treat yourself to lunch. You know, go out and eat some bullshit. Or whatever it is. Just buy something else that you didn't make. It's amazing how much money you're going to save, how much money's still in the bank, and how much healthier you're going to be. All right, because it's one thing about the trades, like, this is a physical job. We're out in the elements. It's either the summertime, you're sweating your gojones off, or you're freezing them off in the wintertime, depending on your geographical location. All right, but take care of yourself. All right? Um, I'm not saying you got to walk around looking like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm just saying that you're comfortable in your own skin, and physically and mentally, you're okay. You're healthy, all right? Trust me, I, I still feel like a lunatic sometimes, but I'm, I feel like I'm physically and mentally healthy. Um, you know, I don't know. It doesn't mean I don't want to swan and die off a bridge sometimes. It just means I'm not going to. <laughs> um, so, and then financially, be smart. We live in a crazy fucking world now, especially with... The, our fucking government, and I'm just going to stop there. I'm not going to get into any details. You know, I don't want to be an Andrew Tate and get, uh, you know, I don't want the Matrix to be after me. <laughs> um, but we live in a crazy world world where it's fucking, you know, uh, 18 eggs is fucking 10 bucks and shit like that. So be smart with your money, all right? You know, my having a big household, man, my grocery bill is... 
it was already expensive and now it's fucking outrageous. So, um, be smart. All right. We can all get through this together. Um, but it's tough times like this take sacrifices. There's just no way around it. Um, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Doesn't mean you can't get through it. All right. Um, but, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready to turn this off, man. I want to say um, I hope that this helps somebody today. Um, if you haven't already uh, followed or liked on all the different social media platforms, if you could, uh, you know, you can join the Facebook group, HVAC Uncensored Nation. If you could like the uh, Facebook page for the business, HVAC Uncensored Podcast, and also follow on Instagram, and uh, give the podcast a review, I'm trying to get the reviews back up. Uh, I know I pushed them in the beginning, and we got several thousand, and then I really kind of stopped mentioning it, so that's probably my fault. But uh, if you like the show, by all means, please go give it a five-star review. And um, if you don't, you know, I, I'm not going to tell somebody that if you don't like the show, do not leave a review, because that's not fair. You got to take the good with the bad. But I would say if you don't like it, I would appreciate if you'd email me and tell me why. You know, I would love to at least be able to defend myself. And if we can't have a conversation, um, you know, and be be able to be uh, able to resolve it at the end and you still say, hey, I still don't like you. I still don't like your show. Then by all means do it. But normally that doesn't happen. A lot of times it's misunderstood. You know, it's misunderstanding. People just don't understand. Um, but that's it. So I'm going to go and end this. I want to say thank you to all of the po sponsors of the podcast, uh, Yellow Jacket, Company Cam, Blue On, Chirp, and uh, Profit Rocket. And I also have uh, something else that I'm doing with uh, Profit Rocket that should be starting here soon. A few other sponsors of the podcast that are talking. I'm just not sure if I want to. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any more, more sponsors. I'm not, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do when it comes to that. But we'll see. Um, if any of you are going to AHR, please reach out to me. Uh, you can email me, hvacuncensored at gmail.com. Also at info, info at hvacuncensored.com. Uh, that's the new email, but it was messed up there for a little bit, so I haven't turned the, the Gmail one off yet until I figured out the issues with it. Um, but you can email me either one of those places and let me know. Uh, I'm going to have some meeting spots up there. Uh, I really do love to meet people who listen to the show and just give you my gratitude and thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, you know, I see numbers and see matrix on a screen, you know, when I see how many episodes, you know, each episode and this many people download it. And it literally tells me this many people from Texas and this many people from, you know, this state and that state. But when you can actually meet somebody and put a face to that, it really, it's awesome. I love it. I really do. And that's why I want to really want to get out to some, different places this year which i'm going to i'm going to start really gonna get out and travel this year and try to meet and hang out with as many people as i possibly can so i'm looking forward to that but uh yeah i keep saying i'm gonna end this and i don't shut up um so guys i love you i appreciate each and every one of you i hope you all get something out of this on this monday morning i hope that it uh you know you listen to this it gets you fucking fired up and you have an amazing fucking day i really do um I was trying to think of what I was going to say there but uh that's it. Yeah, I want you to listen to this on this Monday morning and I want you to know that you have an amazing fucking day to let a fire under your ass and be the best version of yourself. All right? And in the words of Mr. Ben Poole, master your fucking craft. All right? Remember, be safe out there. We all have somebody to make it home to. All right. A wife, a girlfriend, a cat, a dog, wh whatever your situation is, we all have somebody to make it home to be safe. This is a crazy fucking world that we live in. Do the little things. Set yourself apart from the next guy. If this whole show doesn't explain that to you, then I don't know what to tell you. Do the little things. Watch a podcast, read a book, um, take an online class, whatever it is. Reach out and help somebody. If, you, if you're knowledgeable and know what you're doing, I challenge you to help somebody else. Try to make them better. Karma will come back and, and will, 
it will give you the gratitude and give you something tenfold. All right. Let's help each other. As we help each other, we help the industry. All right. And uh, last but not least, I love you, mofos. Thank you for the support. And uh, a good show coming up this Wednesday with Miss uh, Dina Jailbert. She is the, I think, J A L Bert. J Jail Jobbert Jobbert. I don't know. I may be saying her last name wrong. Um, but she is the CEO. It is um Vice Business. I forget the name of it. I don't want to mess it up. But uh she is the CEO. They do mergers and acquisitions, um, all different kinds of things when it comes to businesses. She is such an awesome lady, so smart. So um Anybody has any business questions and stuff like that? She's such a smart lady. They have uh, helped companies, you know, it's it's like $2 billion, something like that. It, it's crazy. So really looking forward to that show. That will be live uh, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook and uh, YouTube. All right. Hope to see you there. Make sure you follow the podcast on all the social media. And until then, I love you, mofos. Um, I appreciate you so much. Have an amazing day. Stay blessed. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Peace. Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests.